and that is my first priority. You might say, am I skipping over the primary? Not at all. But if, if I don't win the general, I should not be here. So my whole last two years have been devoted seven days a week to getting the word across the whole district, all six counties, every month. Every day I'm outside, unless I take a break and go to a political conference. Now, it's not enough to beat Ted Yoho. We have to have something we plan to do and can achieve when we get there. So, if you don't have that, there's no point in going there. If you're going to, there to try your best, to work within the system, you have already failed because the system is designed <coughs> to corrupt people. And the students from Parkland and all across the nation have made that abundantly clear. They understand implicitly, intrinsically from their very souls that federal funding of elections is essential to any progress. That is a systematic change that we need in this country. Now, how do you get there? How, just knowing what you need to do is not enough. How do you get there? You win in November with 200 of your colleagues across the country. I'm talking to a lot of them. And when you get there, there will be fear in the hearts of the remaining incumbents, both in the Senate and the House. And we take advantage of that fear to create motion. Motion. We offer them an option where you say, if you pass big federal funding for elections, then you can get reelected if you bring home something good. You can bring home single payer health care. That would be really good. You can bring home a minimum wage. You can bring home elimination of private prisons. You can bring home so many things as soon as you stop depending upon donor dollars to get reelected. Those people are not sent there as bad, horrible people, but the system corrupts them. It is designed to corrupt them. <coughs> so we know what to do. We know how to do that. And um, that's my pitch. Thank you so much. I do hope that people will join me working on this campaign or on one of these other people's campaign. Whoever you think is best qualified to beat Ted in November, start working now. Because 10 weeks is not sufficient between August 28th and November 6th to win an election. We have to
automatic weapons. Can we make it more effective? Of course we can. We take control of our government with federal funding of elections, and everything becomes possible. If you don't do that, you can make minor victories. And that 1994 ban, it had a 10-year cap. Everything is a couple of steps forward and a few steps back. And this has been going on 20 years ago. The prima facie abomination in the world today is stand your ground laws. There is no rationale, no reason. These are not consistent with any civilization in the history of the world. Murder is illegal. If you want to kill somebody and have it be so, so convenient that you don't even have to go to trial to defend or justify your action, that is not a civilization as I recognize it. I have been in fear in this state for 14 years, and according to their rationale, I should go and kill the government. <laughs> made by veterans is by governing responsibly. We must stop harming our national security by adding to our national debt. However, Congressman Yoho just voted in December for a budget package that the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office says will add $1.5 <coughs> billion dollars to the national debt. Since Congressman Yoho is putting the Republican Party and financial interests above our national security, what recommendations do you have to make and keep America safe? Well, couple of things I've been campaigning on. Every time that Ted Yoho stood up last year in front of veterans, he said 54% of my staff time is devoted to veterans issues. They're my primary concern. I stood up after him and said, and he never responded because I wasn't the Democrat last year. I will be the Democrat this year. I would say, if, you, if your party had not cut the administrative budget for VA by half a billion dollars, if your party fully funded the VA hospital so there's not 370 staff positions in Gainesville unfilled, you would not get any complaints, and that will be my standard. It should be your standard. And besides that, we will also ban military contractors from war zones because they're an abomination. We complain about Hessians in our American history classes. These Hessians were under military command of the English officers. The military contractors in war zones are only under command of their corporate masters, and they're there for the profit of their masters. They have no desire to win the war. We haven't won a war since we've had private contractors. We will not win a war. The profit stream would be interrupted. I prefer the life stream to the profit stream, and that goes straight up and down. We can secure the country for far less money than we're spending. Both parties voted 89 to 11 to add $70 billion to the DOD budget, more than the DOD asked for. If you don't think that the DOD needs to know what they need, it's tough. Get difficult. <laughs> 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 well, of course, the DACA children should, should be citizens. One of the interesting problems in this society is that we honor the rule of law, and the laws are not honorable. Mm -hmm. And when you have requirements that a person who's applying for citizenship has to leave the country for 10 years before they can become a citizen, that's an absurd law. The law is actually makes being an illegal alien only a misdemeanor, and we punish this misdemeanor by <coughs> deporting the person and leaving their child who is a citizen born here. And yes, the party that claims to be the family values party mm -hmm. is the party that is destroying families kind of universally. We should seek laws, make laws, contemplate what should be and make that the law. That's why you go to Congress, so you can change the law and make it consistent with the moral values of this country as we once knew it. This has not been so for a long time, but it does not mean that it cannot be restored. Sanctuary cities simply mean that when ICE says, can you illegally hold that person in jail for a few more days? You say, no. <laughs> How hard is that? And you're going to be punished for that by a government which is not our government? No, this makes no sense. Nothing that we're doing with respect to immigration does. Our next question will actually start with Yvonne with this one. President Trump 
recently unveiled his plans to thwart, thwart <laughs> the opiate crisis. A central feature of this plan is directing the Department of Justice to seek harsher sentences. Well, I don't think when Trump talks about death penalty for drug pushers, he's thinking about the same ones I'm thinking about. <laughs> I'm thinking about the ones who are flying around in corporate jets with a half a trillion dollars of profit taken from the people of this country. And the way to solve that is, as in everything we've talked about tonight, to change the law and the regulatory process, because the law is supposed to cover the regulatory process. The regulatory agencies like the FDA are in charge of implementing the law, and if they do things that are not consistent with the law, they are subject to congressional oversight. That is failing us massively. Specifically, we are giving scientific research a bad name. The opioid crisis derives from a research that said, wow, we have found a not addictive opioid. Mm -hmm. And it didn't. Their research was faked. Two of the five commissioners on the FDA who voted for it, you only need three were lobbyists for that company. This is insane. We have bad research, and bad research occurs whenever the company pays for the research for their own product. We should tax them, and we should pay for our own research in every case that the CDC is interested in. We should be reviewing all the foods that we're, we're eating, all the thousands of additives which haven't even been considered for safe time. <laughs> <laughs> Health care has been a hot topic for years. The current administration is dead set on repealing Obamacare. What is your plan to tackle health care? Oh, <coughs> well, now, uh, single payer health care, HR 676, straight up health care for everyone. And the amazing thing, the reason that this will pass is that the corruption by our corporate donor owners is so deep, so wide, and so interwoven that if we do everything, if we treat everybody from birth to death with no lifetime maximums, with no co-pays, no deductibles, see any doctor you want to anytime you need to, not the insurance CEOs dictate your life and your health when you die, you do all those things, well, it turns out to be a trillion dollars per year cheaper. You probably only save 700 billion the first year because you're going to take care of the three million code matchers that are competing with each other. And when the insurance companies are the not for profit, highly profitable hospitals, and when you do that, you make enough noise, you build enough political capital. And you do that in January of 2019, you arrive with a bill in hand and you vote on it the first week. Then the dividends come back within two years and you have complete control of the government in 2020. And you take down the fossil fuel industry and you take down big ag where Monsanto is poisoning us and in their own cafeteria <coughs> eating organic food. Same, same answer, same conclusion. The idea that Finding someone to love should be the governor's prerogative to find who you're about to love. I, may, I cannot fathom such an idea. I was so happy when I started school that they stopped training left-handers to writing right handers <laughs> And this is a lot bigger issue, and we're talking about it in 2018. This is insane. No. It is a fundamental, inalienable right to life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. It is not the government's business. It is nobody's harmed. If you are Christian and you find this objectionable, don't do it. That's all I have to say. Contrary to what Yvonne said, it's true it has no positive effect, but it has vast negative consequences. And those you tell and review the Republicans by saying, look, they passed in the House. Ted Yoho and 233 of his buddies passed a budget resolution October 26th, which said, should there be a deficit in our future, we 
which is already planned, then we will cover that deficit by cuts, preferentially, no sequestration of uniform cuts across the board. We will preferentially cut Medicare, Medicaid, DHS, and CHIPS. This is their idea of modifying health care. Let people die quickly. It is nothing except what Alan Grayson said eight years ago. And the tax cuts have absolutely in, enormous negative consequences for our, our small businesses, for everyone. But the immediate effect is slightly positive because there's so many people listening to Fox News that they go to each other's stores and have Republicans telling me their business is booming. And other people saying, well, I got a $20 increase. Well, they had the IRS change the withholding rules so people won't be getting <coughs> refunds in April, but they will have voted in November. That is how devious they are and how little they have to stand still. <laughs> and as Tom said, small people get $5, $10 more in their paycheck. This is not going to do any good. Again, this tax cuts to corporations are going to bring deficit. How the government is going to bring money to provide all these services now? So it was just a favor to his good friends from Donald Trump and the government. Florida is one of half of US states that require students to pass a high stakes exam to be promoted to the next grade. I graduate, although empirical evidence demonstrates that high stakes testing undermines efforts to improve education for all children, placing narrow, flawed instruments at the center of education while leaving out other approaches to assess learning. Additionally, this requirement disproportionately hurts minority and often low income students and is a key contributor to major educational achievement gaps. What is your position on high stakes testing and educational equity? position is that high stakes testing is a mill slot. It's a way to relieve teachers' responsibility. And you need to view that when you pay teachers so poorly that they have to walk dogs at night. In a real country where they value the only renewable resource that we have, which is our children, they have teachers that they trust who are professional and know whether a student is performing up to par, even if they didn't have the language skills when they started their first foreign country. In Finland, <coughs> if Europeans are, are learning, they get promoted not because they're passing the test in Finnish, but because the teachers know what their capabilities are and that they're working to their potential. And that is how I grew up, and I think it worked pretty well. So we must break the whole unions and respecting striking teachers and I'm hopeful that the teachers in Florida after the attack on unions by the state legislature this year will go on strike with the students and they will learn more about America that way than anything we can teach them ourselves. They will teach us we need to listen to our children. They're here to teach us. Well there is good legislation the All Fossil Fuels Act, H.R. 3671, introduced by Tulsi Gabbard, is the most ambitious. It requires an elimination of fossil fuel use by 2035. I would amend that to include a $100 per ton CO2 tax and other greenhouse equivalents, methane being 36 times would have $3,600 a ton for usage of coal, producing three and a half tons of CO2 for every ton burned, would have a $350 tax. So it addresses the dirtiest fuels first. This tax uses market forces rather than subsidies to change us in the most market-driven way towards clean energy. But there's more that is necessary. We need also to take on um, big agriculture because the phosphate mines, the phosphate laden water that pollutes our beaches, these things are not consistent with, with, the, with the zero carbon footprint. It turns out regenerative farming will be needed 
treating organic food in small farms rather than factory farms is a key to that. From the passive point at which just stopping caps, fossil fuel use will, will work, we are near a tipping point to which we will tip inevitably, immutably, irreversibly. Thank you so much, Stan. It's a bad place. Ivan, I have the Well, I think for the moment that the universal basic income is highly des desirable, but pragma pragmatically it's not realizable. The reasons that I favor it, basically, are evidence-based. There have been small trials of universal basic income for three or four years, and a Canadian city whose name I've forgotten, and what they find is that when you give people money with no strings attached, they generally, not universally, but generally do the right thing. They seek more education because they can afford the time for the education, and in most countries like Canada, the education is basically tuition free. With the basic income, they can train themselves to better themselves. Whereas welfare in this country is set up as a punitive system, and one has to, if one were a cynic, I am a cynic, believe that it was set up that way in order to dish on poor people and to accuse them and make them the problem when they are not the problem. The problem is all the real money goes up and nothing is coming down. What do I mean by nothing? My wage was $1.65 in 1966, minimum wage. I could buy a car in three summer jobs, three summers of work. Now, the wage compared to cost of living is only half that to the minimum. And if you compare it to productivity, it's only 40% of that. So we should be gauging our minimum wage and all other wages to Thank you, Tom. productivity. Oh, I completely concur with you on these matters. The brilliance of these students in increasing the intersectionality to include Black Lives Matter and the willingness of all parties to join together in common cause is the basis of revolution. We are in a revolution. I was praying for this two years ago when I started going out daily in the streets to campaign. I see that it moving almost faster than I keep up with it. I'm going to guess sir. So I'll let Tulsi Gabbard use it. <laughs> but every problem has the same art. And when I spoke Saturday, I got to a point where I said, what we have to have is federal funding of elections. And this drew enormous applause because everybody understands it. Now, I thank the NRA for inexplicitly and arrogantly producing that effect by their complete domination of the legislative process for the last 20 years. And we will <laughs> all of those things. And while we're at it, we'll increase that intersection be the whole country, starting with private prisons and private schools and privatization of Social Security and privatization of hospitals and water supplies and privatization of streets. And we will turn it all around when we take the Congress My unifying message is pretty much what Bernie Sanders said last year. And he would have won last year. He was definitely the winner in this district in an open race. In the close primary, he almost won the last year. He knew the efforts of Jim Powell and many, many hundreds of other people. And his message resonates with people in all the red states and all the blue states because it is a message of free the people. The things that we need to do are all known. They're all pretty obvious. We don't have to look very far, but across the lake. And we see people doing these things. We see that they work. And all we have to do is take control of our government, despite the Supreme Court, despite Citizens United. They have left an opening where we can drive a wage in and split apart the corruption, the corrupt shell of government that we have. And start electing our own representatives. Again, public funding of election. Give it to any, to any candidate they wish, so long as that candidate agrees in a binding contract not to accept any other money, and then you can identify him on the ballot as, for example, Tom Wells, a straight arrow candidate. And the people who continue to take corporate money, thank you so much.
My unifying message to all Americans is to get out and vote. Because a little head start. <laughs> I started back in June of 2016, and I've been in each of the six counties. Union is a little bit difficult yes. every month. I try to get to every county twice a month. The people know me there well enough that I have in five counties people on the ground willing to work for me, volunteers. I encourage you guys to decide amongst us and start working now because it's too late, as I said in my introduction, to start in June. But I know that we can beat Ted because he is beating himself. We need to keep track of the facts, treat his voters with respect, and treat them hard on the issues. I, I found that I was doing this, and I wasn't saying it as well as Nina Turner says. Am I saying it right, Nina Turner? <laughs> she says, soft on the people, hard on the issues. And this will win this year. I knew two years ago you couldn't win two years ago, but you can lay the groundwork for a large victory in November. We have to have large victories so that they know that their days are numbered so <coughs> that we don't get to this time around. Thank you. In light of recent movements such as Black Lives Matter, Me Too, Times Up, Never Again, and others, do you believe that our Congress should pass laws that address the issues pr presented by such movement? I believe they should at least hear them, understand where they're coming from, and uh, yes, make, make. Uh, right now, the principal interest of most of our representatives and senators, if you look just objectively at results, is to get re-elected, and the modality for getting re-elected is to do the bidding of your corporate donor owners, and that is following straight up and down across every field of human endeavor in this country, and this country is leading the way towards oligarchy and feudalism. That is not where I want to be, but we can turn it around, we have to do it now, because, yes, I'm a little bit worried about elections being held this year, because we are looking at a political <coughs> ruler who has no problems about abridging, abridging the law, the rule of law, because he's accustomed to being a CEO, where anything he says goes, and if you don't like it, you quit. Well, you can't Point quit, it. <laughs> So, that is enough. Yeah. Of all the issues, what is the most important to you and why? Well, pragmatically, I think federal funding of elections is the keystone. Fundamentally, you have to get around very quickly to solving the climate change problem because the precipice that we're approaching can do the entire species. We're already going through a major extinction such as the, the geologist, the paleontologist describes. We have lost so many, such a large fraction animal and, and, and ocean life, it is unconsciousable. Even if you don't need the absolute certainty, you have no moral basis for rejecting the fact that you have to do what you can just in case all the scientists in the world happen to be right. People who are denying science are getting on airplanes that are designed in wind tunnels and Lying around happily. Oh, I'm sorry. They're designed in computer perspective that you just take off an airplane after the computer says it'll fly, and it flies. But we don't believe the climate science is a very sad joke. The fossil fuel companies can be replaced without economic consequence except to them and the banks, and the wars are fought for those guys.